The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Four Center podcast feed. I'm Ken Napsok. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. And I'm Jennifer Landa. And we are all here. We are all here to talk about Star Wars news, breaking news from a long time ago. And we're going to be diving in to, well, we're going to dance around the rumors. There's some wonderful, tasty rumors out there, but they're all kind of focused around this movie, the new Jedi Order, Jedi Academy movie. Uh, We're going to talk about that and uh, celebrate it, ask some questions, and get to all of those wonderful things. But before we do that, I want to remind you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash force center. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. A little bit later, as always, whoever our force center recommends an audiobook we think you should try out on us. And we have uh, our current ask segment, which I got to say, it's been going pretty good. Thanks to all of you out there in Force Center land. Uh, we've been uh, asking directly to help the channel grow, support the channel, all those kind of cool things. And you're all uh, just, I don't want to say stepping up because that's kind of insulting. Like, ah, step up, kid. That's not <laughs> what I mean. But you're all just been there for us and we feel the love. So, Joseph, what is our current ask and what do we got going? Yeah, we have a, a lot of great stuff to talk about. So I'll try to keep it short. Uh, one of the things that we have to talk about is on our Patreon, we are doing our other center experiment where we're talking about something that isn't directly Star Wars. We are talking about Indiana Jones series of podcasts, Indiana Jones and the Perilous podcast that are going to be building up to the new Indiana Jones movie, Dial of Destiny. We recorded our first overall view that's been up on Patreon for a little while. But on May 1st, uh, we will be releasing our discussion about Raiders of the Lost Ark. I've been watching the film. So now uh, when I see the word ask, I keep thinking of the asps line uh, <laughs> from Sala. Uh, asks, very dangerous. You go first. Um, so we're excited for that. Uh, those are If you want to go with us on the journey, those will be Patreon episodes building up to Dial of Destiny. After Dial of Destiny, we will make those episodes public. We've got a lot of great things going on on the Patreon page. We have an exclusive episode about the sort of positive power the impact of star wars we have new merch tiers and and goals and all sorts of stuff like that in particular with goals this uh weekend we reached a goal which is to reach two thousand dollars a month at which point jennifer is going to do a series of youtube videos based on her uh, old episodes that are kind of npr meets star wars those episodes are called a jedi beats and happy beeps and we keep accidentally calling it jedi beeps but we'll have an (laughs) actual name uh, for that series that is going to happen that jennifer is going to get going on we're also going to have a new goal soon uh that i made a note to talk to ken about and see if how he felt (laughs) about that goal and i forgot so behind the curtain we haven't decided what the next goal is but i got an idea i'm gonna pitch it to ken and jennifer and we'll be building to the next goal we want to keep the momentum going thank you everyone for joining us on the patreon journey uh the other thing that we wanted to do a quick ask about or or a tell and ask and a tell (laughs) this friday april 28th at 2 p.m specific we're doing uh pacific not specific friday (laughs) april 28th 2 p.m specifically pacific we are doing our next q a live stream we've been having so much fun with that a lot of uh listeners have been joining us Uh, it's been great to kind of have an active discussion with the questions coming in and then seeing all the listeners kind of answers to the questions as well and sharing those as we go. So if you are available, please join us for that. We'll be putting out the promo. We've also been having some fun doing absolutely most of it is Star Wars, but spending some time with some other center topics as well. So for this one, we're going to talk about all the news that came out of Celebration and and all that stuff. But then we're also going to have a little other center section where you can ask us questions about uh, our travel adventures outside of Star Wars Celebration. We can be able to hear from all of you about the places that you've explored. So very excited for that. Friday, April 28th, 2 p.m. Pacific. I am passing the talking hammer back to you, Ken. (laughs) You did a great job. We don't have scripts around here. We just have thoughts and ideas. And you put it all together like a champion. (laughs) <laughs> I can't wait to talk more about cheese in Paris on Friday. I got a lot of thoughts, a lot of thoughts. <laughs> so there, and so excited that the uh, the the Landa series is a go, Jen. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you to everyone who made this possible. Um, I I can't wait. I'm thinking yeah. about that 
fog machine that I need to <laughs> get. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do the fog machine. But That's the next goal, the fog yeah. machine. <laughs> fog machine and the trench coat. That's my goal. Love that. I guess. Love that. Love that indeed. Well, we're going to get to some news here in a second. We always do like to catch up and it's a bit a lot going on, a lot going on in the world, a lot going on in our lives. Uh, but also sometimes it means, uh, you know, you can just sit on a couch for a half hour and uh, that's uh, going on as well. That was part of my weekend. Uh, Jen, uh, what did you do? Well, uh, I'll start off with, I don't want to say negative because it's not oh. negative, but I oh. watched the Mandalorian season finale, as I like to joke around call it, season finale. Um, <laughs> and it was, I loved it. I thought it was great. So much fun. And then I went online and people <laughs> were disappointed and had mm. all these theories. And this is where I, I, for the first time I realized, oh, I kind of, because I had been you know, traveling and I had been recovering from traveling, I had not really been dialed into the discourse that was happening online. Mm. And so people had some theories and those theories, I guess, didn't pan out in the episode and they were very disappointed. And it was the first time where I was like, oh, this is what like the average, you know, person watching Star Wars is probably like, like, yeah, that was great. <laughs> the rest of us, you know, diehards that are constantly talking about it all the time that it made me realize, oh, I'm, I'm actually glad I didn't have any theories. I just was enjoying the show at face value. Um, but yeah, that, that was really interesting. Uh, and then a another thing that I thought was funny was this past week, my, uh, three-year-old and I have been driving around and she'll randomly shout, there's Star Wars. And I'm, <laughs> I'm looking, you know, I'll see like graffiti and whatever. I'm like, what is she seeing? Is it a trash can? Like she thinks it's dry. So I finally realized she's seen the advert uh, advertising of young Jedi adventures mm. on the sides of buses and on bus stops. <laughs> and so nice. she's ready. My kids are ready to watch that show on May 4th. Yeah, that's and that is Star Wars. That's Star mm. Wars. That's Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cute. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, I saw that bus go by, and I was like, "Did I? Was that a little fever dream? Uh, did I fall asleep?" Uh, that's great that they're advertising it so big. Yeah, yeah. right. It's like mainstream, it's like for you know, for kids, so they can shout their Star Wars to their parents. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that as well. I'll do that as well. Protect nubs. Protect nubs. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Ups and lists, family yeah. favorites. Yeah, and, 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 and I'm with you too. You know, there's uh, always going to be a, a bevy of opinions, as there should be about shows and finales and everything. But it's just been kind of fun to uh, find the pockets of celebration uh, uh, on social media or text with friends or just yourself, just staring at the screen and going, "I liked that," uh, exactly. or "I liked some of it," or "I like parts of it." All yeah, right. I was I was looking up something in the show. I can't remember what uh, the the final episode of season three, and I just happened to click to like one of the exact moments where Grogu is just hauling little green butt while being attacked <laughs> by these super yes. cool Praetorian guards, and it's it's emotional, but it's also like you take that step back and like this is beautifully ridiculous. Look at that little <laughs> look at that little puppet baby trying to escape <laughs> those so deadly sci-fi warriors. I, it, it just overcame me again. I'm like, uh, people are always going to wrestle with Star Wars and, you know, that mm -hmm. sort of a, a Jar Jar Binks to Darth Maul spectrum mm -hmm. that Star Wars exists on from the from the silly to the really cool. Mm -hmm. But it just made me so happy. Like, where, where else are you going to see that? That's Star Wars. <laughs> it it, it makes me... It. Makes me think that if, uh, you know, if they were to shoot Yoda today, like, would we see him do more of that? You know, mm. we see him uh, just, uh, he'd be a little older, a little slower, but I'm not, I'm not <laughs> even talking prequel stuff. Like, I'm talking Re Empire Strikes Back, just shuffling along at a fast fast pace. <laughs> I've oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. Love to see it. Uh, any, any other exciting adventures, Joseph? Uh, uh, I, uh, well, you know, actually, take it back. We did talk about this. I know what you're going to talk about. <laughs> I'm going to say this. Uh, I didn't have uh, many Star Wars adventures because I was uh, busy kind of celebrating a birthday all through the week and also just relaxing and recovering from, from travel. I, I read parts of uh, Battle Scars yesterday out on my back, uh, in my back patio underneath the sun on a cushioned uh, reclined seat, uh, seat. It was that was good. And that was the Star Wars Adventures. But I did get uh, I, I, I've been noticing this has happened a couple of times because of the Young Jedi Adventures. Uh, and, and the advertising, some friends of mine who are a little bit outside that bubble, fans, but don't live it every day. I've been writing to me and going, why are they doing a, a series on the younglings that Anakin kills? 
<laughs> wow. It's happened a few times. And I think, you know, I'm like, you know, it's a fair question because they see Yoda in it. And they're, and they're mm. kind of like, one of my friends was like, well, he doesn't look young enough. I go, well, it's about 200 years. He's in his Orson Bean face. He's got his a lot, of, lot more white hair. He's not losing it. All. Like, I don't know what to tell you, but yeah, that's been kind of fun uh, having to explain. No, no, no. It's a kid's show 200 years before all that. But <laughs> that's, really, that's, really, that's been fun. That's been <laughs> fun. But we don't yet know which Jedi will try to murder these yeah. Padawans. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's true. And also just like, yeah, I just, that's a, your, if your mind goes to that immediate dark spot, I was just like one of my friends. I was like, well, no, eh, okay, no, that's not what they're doing. <laughs> um, anyway. Anyways, but that was it. I had so a nice, simple, relaxing weekend. Uh, but Joseph, I know you had a big Star Wars adventure. Mm-hmm. I did. I was very, very lucky. Um, yeah, our, our credit to our friend Ken Plume, who uh, who often uh, texts uh, when he sees Star Wars things. Uh, texted uh, that there was this uh, Ben Burt um, talk Mm -hmm. at the Academy Museum here in Los Angeles and um, Mm -hmm. it was free and it just was like how is that free what I I kept feeling like I was getting away with something that like some Mm -hmm. klaxons were gonna go off and like who are you to think you can (laughs) hear Ben Burt talk for free Uh, it's a part of a ton of programming that the Academy Museum is doing that is either free or very affordable like ten dollar screenings um wow got to talk to uh, one of the people who's involved with the programming and and she was clearly very enthused about her job and talked a lot about all the great programming uh, but it was amazing it was in their their big uh, theater which if you've seen pictures of it the back side of the academy museum does look like a little mini death star but that's a uh, housing <laughs> this mm. is a great uh, you know rounded theater it's bright red it honestly does look like where uh, snoke and the praetorian guards would go to watch home movies it's <laughs> very very cool um and, and they, they weren't totally clear on what it was about. It's like, well, come here, uh, Ben Burt, talk. And what it ended up being is he was being interviewed uh, by the director, the woman who made this wonderful documentary called Making Waves, which is about mm-hmm. the uh, the history of sound design. There's a lot of Ben Burt in that. Um, yeah. That is available on YouTube. If you have not watched Making Waves, I strongly, strongly suggest that. Um, so he was being interviewed by the director of that film, but he was also, they were clearly friends, and, and it was it was a very light interview because uh, uh, Mr. Burt uh, had the wheel. Uh, <laughs> and and what, it, what it ended up being was he was really talking about his life and his journey. And mm. I think as many Star Wars fans know from seeing him on behind the scenes things, uh, he is very funny, very insightful. He has a, a, a very sort of... Um, to me, boyish attitude, uh, like that he's still enthralled with sci-fi and fantasy and the magic of movie making. And he talked about that, uh, about how uh, he wanted to stay in this world because when he was a kid, he ran around with his friends in the neighborhood and uh, pretended to be robots and pistol whip, <laughs> pistol whip each other like they did in the Westerns. <laughs> so he kept saying, like, just want to keep being a robot and pistol whip my friends. <laughs> uh, and then maybe that's not the best way to say it. Um, but it was really fascinating because he did talk about his childhood. He did talk about his his journey. But there was a real focus on what he wanted to talk about. Um, he didn't say anything about lightsabers. He said, like, yeah, I edited the prequels. And that was about it. There was, like, one photo. And he moved on from, like, <laughs> kind, kind of a big deal. Yeah. Uh, but he, yeah. there was a real focus on his love of R2, on on Wally, on the exhibit that he made for uh, the museum. Mm. Um, it, it wasn't filmed. I, I guess he requested for it not to be filmed because he just wanted to share his, his mm. journey. So I feel really lucky to be there. Um, mm. a, a couple of highlights that, that were really great to me. Um, he made this film, I think, in college that was totally a Flash Gordon thing, mm-hmm. starring himself, called Rod Flash Conquers Infinity. <laughs> oh, and cool. yeah, Ben Burt plays Rod Flash. He played like a clip of it, and it's got like the credits for the actors. And then it says, also starring Vasquez Rocks in Bronson Canyon. <laughs> oh, like, nice. <laughs> total, like, you know, filmmaker, you know, science mm-hmm. fiction jokes. Anyway. Kismet that he and Lucas found one another. The Star Wars stuff that he shared that was fresh to me is because they just hired him out of college. It, it, they didn't. He wasn't in a union. He wasn't in Hollywood yet. Mm. Lucasfilm just called up, uh, you know, the college looking for like, do you have a sound design person who's you know basically real young that we can afford? Right. Like, 
well, Ben Burt. So they technically hired him as a PA. Uh, so he was doing all the sound stuff, but he was doing a bunch of other stuff. So apparently mm. he just had in the back uh, of his, you know, derpy little car, uh, all of the concept art, all of Macquarie's original paintings. Oh, wow. And Lucas would call him up and go like, hey, can you meet me at this studio? <laughs> And wow. Macquarie Painting is just living in the back of his car. And like, as wow. he puts it like, yeah, we didn't know they'd be worth millions of dollars. We had no idea the film would be this successful. <laughs> uh, I think he joked like, we thought if we were really lucky, it would do well enough that we would be invited to Star Trek conventions. <laughs> 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 we talked about it a little bit. But um, he apparently picked Carrie Fisher up in Beverly Hills and drove her around for hair tests wow. um, <laughs> here, here in L.A. And... You know, said, I wish we could remember what we talked about, but, you know, we had fun joking around. And he showed some amazing photos of different hairstyles. Uh, apparently, he ran the camera for the famous auditions. Oh. Uh, oh wow. And he told a story about, on a lunch break, deciding that I could I could play Luke. <laughs> <laughs> and recorded an audition for himself. Oh, my gosh. And played it back and went, yeah, maybe, maybe it's not as strong as I thought. And then after lunch, Mark Hamill came in. Wow. Oh, perfect. So just these, all these really, really great, great stories. Um, but I, I, I could go on and on. Just a, a sense of absolute love for filmmaking. He focused a lot on, he did want to be a director and he has directed a bunch of like IMAX stuff. He talked about working on the young Indiana Jones adventures being some of his happiest times because he got to write and direct and do sound and kind of, kind of do it all. Mm. Uh, so it was a great picture of just this this legendary person and getting to see them, um, you know, both impressed by their career, but also kind of getting a little sense of them as a human. Mm -hmm. um, final thing uh, is the he ended it by he made so he has an exhibit at the Academy uh, Museum called Behold. It is this great uh, 330 degrees because it's almost a circle, but there's a hole for the door. So it's mm. 330 degree. I think he called it something like 30, 330 degree super cinemascope. Uh, it's a really moving montage of the history of storytelling about space and science fiction. Mm. And it's called Behold. And if you're in the L.A. area or you're just visiting and you love Star Wars, you love science fiction, it's really moving. It's really great. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh but the, the end of the, the show was him playing a documentary he made about making Behold. Hmm. Uh, and he joked that I was just spending too much time in the basement and I wanted my family to know what I was doing in the basement. So I made this documentary <laughs> about making this. And it, it, yeah, the whole experience was great and, and beautiful. And I know I've been going on for a little while, but I just wanted to share a little bit of the this picture of what, what he shared with interesting Star Wars facts and just what a great and interesting person he is and how important he is to the legend of Star Wars. Oh, mm -hmm. oh absolutely. I've listened to the Jedi beat episode by Jennifer. <laughs> no, no. And, and, and uh, I, I had uh, talked with uh, you and our buddy Hal Lublin after this uh, event, he was there as well. And both, both of you expressed the same thing. I thought I've heard all the stories, but no, mm -hmm. you have more to tell. That's just fascinating. Love that. Yeah. Thank you for letting me share. No. Yeah. No, sounds no. amazing. Force center on the scene at the Ben Burke. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into some news here, though, I'll say. It's not direct news. We're not, uh, we're not, uh, we're just talking about some stuff that's swirling up here. Uh, we are going to begin here with, uh, you know, we have this wonderful announcement coming out of Star Wars Celebration. Three Star Wars movies. We got Donna the Jedi, the Filoni New Republic era movie, and, you know, this new Jedi Order movie. This is a Charmin Obed Chinoy film. And naturally, with uh, after the announcement of Daisy Ridley coming back as Ray, the John Boyega rumors have arrived and they're swirling. And we're going to not dive directly into the rumors. We're going to talk about the idea. We have mentioned this before, so it's kind of a, a permanent record kind of episode. Let's get this out here now. And naturally, the desire to see Boyega return to the role of Finn is, is strong following this announcement at Star Wars Celebration. And we here at Force Center have discussed uh, hope for that. That sounds wonderful. We've also preached a little patience. We'll talk more about that. And uh, highlighted the importance of just the consideration for Boyega's state of mind over it all, over Star Wars. He seems, the last time he had really spoken about it, there was that interview. There was the Fugel saying interview. There were some other clips where he seemed to be in a good spot, at, at peace with it, at, at peace with leaving Finn behind. Uh, but things can change and story opportunities can emerge and 
We're going to just discuss our thoughts on that for a bit, Jen. I know Joseph and I have had a chance to talk about it, especially on live Q&As and stuff recently in Star Wars Celebration. Uh, but your thoughts on just uh, where we're at with, with Finn and Boyega and Star Wars as we look towards the rumors and possibly appearing in this next film. I felt like the the chapter had really been closed based on his interviews, John Boyega's interviews, um, I would say maybe like a couple a couple years ago. And then things started to shift, which makes me wonder mm. that maybe there have been some talks about him returning or maybe it's just like, you know, mm. I don't I don't know what's what's going on behind the scenes. But I do remember how excited John Boyega was at the beginning. Mm. Right. The yeah. Force Awakens press tour he, showing off his action figures. He was <laughs> so happy to be a part of it. And that was really infectious, like his mm -hmm. enthusiasm and joy. And then it was sad to see how things changed, you know, in the fandom, obviously, and then with his storyline in The Last Jedi. And I love The Last Jedi, uh, but he was very frustrated by his, you know, character's arc, his character being sidelined, and then obviously Rise of Skywalker. It just, it was interesting to see where he came from, right? And mm -hmm. now he's also become a much more seasoned actor. And that's just kind of what happens in the business. The business, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it hardens you. It, it makes you a little bit more jaded. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's very understandable. Uh, so mm. I think there's, I, I know we all want to see more of Finn. And I mm. think now he's maybe open to the possibility, if it's mm. right. Yeah, no, all that kind of tracks and makes sense. And yeah, I'm, I, for one, I, I just didn't think there'd be this opportunity. It was a, it was always a joke, right? Oh, they'll do a, a, a quote, episode 10 in 30 years and then we'll see. But to mm -hmm. have, you know, we're going to talk about this quote, episode 10 factor of it here in the second half of the show here. Uh, but we got, we have an opportunity and maybe if we're surprised, I got to imagine he might be surprised too. <laughs> And mm. and if you get a chance to go back and do some more things or do some differently, and you know, I, I I personally speak for myself. I understand some of maybe even his frustrations. Don't think he's wrong about the sideline thing. It definitely mm. changed the focus, changed. But I just also love what his character is about, what his character has to do and say in the movie uh, and represent. So there's a lot there too. But uh, Joseph, I, I want to get you in on this too because I, I I always never want to speak for you, uh, but also mm -hmm. had these discussions about the the patience factor of this let's just enjoy the announcement of daisy ridley coming back and i think a lot of people are and, and still are uh but naturally the questions would follow and maybe there'd be the right time for the questions or just kind of hey let's see what john thinks <laughs> you know that he <laughs> owes it to us or is going to go out on another interview and be like here's what i'm thinking but anyways am i off base on this this kind of like patience patience yeah, no, I, I I totally understand people who feel uh, connected to Finn. The, the importance of Finn are pulling for John Boyega. Want more Finn? I do not want to uh, to to rain on anyone's parade. I want more Finn too, but I want Finn and John Boyega when it is right for Boyega and when it is right for Finn. And I think mm -hmm. that's for me where the patience and the hope comes from. So. Yeah. For me, the first question is, does John Boyega want to come back? <laughs> yeah. That's the, the most essential thing. Uh, is mm -hmm. he happy with his story? The next thing is, which we're going to talk about a lot, so I will keep it very short. What is the movie? Yeah. Does Finn make sense in the movie? Is this a place where Finn can be celebrated and highlighted? Or would it be would it end up being a story where he's not the focus? And that is actually even more frustrating to just have him kind of in the background. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a, a big question to me. And then the other part of the number three on the patience list is I continue to be excited about just the fact that Lucasfilm wants to cover this territory, wants to say, mm -hmm. we are going to go beyond rise of Skywalker in a big way. We're going to define this era. We're going to create 15 years where mm -hmm. in which any one of those 15 years, there can be a Finn story. Just the existence of this movie, even if Finn is not in it, creates the opportunity for Finn storytelling. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jen, you're excited about that too, because I, I like that idea too. Not that I'm pitching a Finn Disney Plus series, but you know, it's just the world of possibilities exist if they're going into this era, right, Jen? It's like yeah, opportunities. Absolutely. Um, again, with Daisy Ridley, I thought that that chapter had kind of been closed yeah. just from, you know, her career and things like that. But now, it's, whether we see Finn in this movie or not, I don't know, but it opens up the possibility to a Disney Plus series or to a, another movie where he gets to be the, the folk, 
the focal mm-hmm. point. So yeah, I think I think that's I think that's why also what's feeding these rumors is people mm-hmm. are just excited about the possibility. Yeah, and that's where I go with it right from the start. Not surprised by these questions that, I mean, it was a hashtag at celebration, right? Coming out of it, or at least locally, some of those hashtags are locally localized but yeah no absolutely uh, you know and, and 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 he's not the only one i have questions about you know we got if we're, we're only going 15 years in the future in the storyline a lot of these a lot of these players are still on the field and uh you know we talk about what we want out of this movie at this uh, stage and you know it's from a distance here but um let, let's go a little bit more into into the rumors um and I, I try to, I, I don't, I, I, I got, I'm excited by the rumors. I'll start there. I'm starting to pop. <laughs> I haven't looked at them all um, or seen really where they're coming from, but like, okay. Like, you know, they're, they're, when there's smoke, there's fire. A lot of, a lot of rumor reporting lately has been, has been uh, relatively uh, correct. Sometimes it's small doses and the overall picture is incorrect. All those kind of things about the rumors, but I don't know. I got excited about it. Uh, as well, but it made me think about you know the character of Finn and what he means to us and, and what it, would it mean to to have him back. And I, I think it's it's a, it's a it's a wonderful not second chance a continued chance to to just dive more in the story and and take and, and take the promise of the character, especially in Rise of Skywalker, with some of the things that were going to be revealed around him or things he was hinting at, and get a chance to just explore it. Uh, a little bit more. It, it's kind of a continuation of what Joseph, Joseph, what you were saying, the opportunities, the story, mm-hmm. comes, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyways, what do you, what do you all think about just the rumors? Do, do you even have any reaction to the rumors, Joseph? Are you squashing them in your heart? I <laughs> do. I, I, I have a strong reaction to the rumor that is, um, what, uh, I'm trying to think the right way to phrase this. Mm. Why do we care about rumors? I guess yes. yeah. is, mm-hmm. is, uh, I want to take a beat and analyze that. I sound like Frazier. Let's all take a beat. Um, <laughs> the uh, the value to me of rumors is that if it's something you want, like uh, John Vega returning is Finn, mm-hmm. either in this movie or some somewhere else, is that's what I want. So I am excited by that rumor. But then I think, you know, rumors have a shelf date and you look back and, well, this person was rumored. Uh, how exciting is it? That this person was rumored to be in John Wick too. Well, that movie came out years ago, and we all know how it worked out. Yeah. So I think there is also the, this part of rumors where um, they can start to become detached from the thing that we truly care about, which is: yeah. is the character going to return? Is the actor going to return? That's exciting. What would that mean for the story? That's all exciting. But when do rumors become detached from the thing we're actually excited about, and just become kind of this um, this game of who, who's got their finger on the pulse, mm-hmm. who's right? Um, so I'm excited about the possibility of John Boyega coming back. I'm excited about Finn coming back as a rumor. Uh, but I also just want to, to, to not have that slip into just a, a game of, of who, who's winning the rumor wars because rumors have a sh- shelf life that yeah. is, you know, not, not great. And I, I mm-hmm. we, we've talked about this before, but I just want to say this quickly. I, I take every rumor at this point with not a grain of salt, but a dump truck of salt. <laughs> um, I think of these kinds of rumors like weather reports that mm-hmm. they are uh, a lot of these sources are, are consistent and they get things right and they get things wrong, but they get a lot of things right. And like a weather report, I believe this is true right now. Yes. And it might be wrong in five bleeping minutes. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think some of the these same threads had what I think was probably very accurate reporting at the time. That when a version of this story was being written by Lindelof and, and uh, Justin Britt Gibson, that a star was attached. And then there was a rumor that that star might be Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, who mm-hmm. I enjoy as an actor. So I'd be very excited by that rumor that mm-hmm. he was attached. And maybe he was, but that was the weather. And it was 71 degrees that day. <laughs> and now it's 89 degrees. And mm-hmm. it's not true anymore. And that, that had value then. It was true. But yeah. it's not true to what we're going to see on screen because things move fast in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a current of water that takes us different places. Uh, Jen, you know what I mean? Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. It, it reminds me of succession, <laughs> the succession episode <laughs> last night. Right. Because unless you're in the room, 
There are meetings, there are calls that are happening, things are constantly changing, and a lot of times there's there's a lot of yeses or like, yeah, maybe, or nobody really wants to upset each other in Hollywood, and so it's always like, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, send me that. Sure, 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 I'll take a look at that, which means, you know, I'm not going to take a look at that. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think it makes sense that mm -hmm. the original actor left after Damon Lindelof's uh, departure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay, that. And the person who's been kind of fueling these rumors, he's been kind kind of right. Mm -hmm. But as we've been talking about, it moves so fast. It might be right, you know, a week ago, but by then something new has happened. You know, it's interesting because nobody's mentioning uh, bringing back Poe as much as they are talking about bringing back Finn. And I think that there there is like a wishful thinking because his character was sidelined in The Last Jedi, that people want more from that character. They feel like it's like untapped potential. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're like, bring him back. And then, you know, yeah. maybe maybe the reporter is then going and trying to find out from their sources, hey, what, what about Finn? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. They've been having calls with John Boyega. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. And that's how <laughs> mm -hmm. the game of telephone begins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and we're all about... Because this is a this is a positive rumor. To almost your point, Joseph, yeah. it, it's it's like yeah, that's what I said. I'm, I'm I saw the I saw some stuff start emerge, and I was like, oh, that'd be great, that'd be great. Uh, and then, uh, I but I want to I want to stay steadfast in my thoughts on the rumor reporting because if it's a negative one, I'd be upset today. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I got to remind myself to to just kind of uh, find that Qui Gon balance, I guess, <laughs> of the rumors because it could all change, and this could create expectations. Uh, you know, maybe this is nothing new for a force center discussion, but it could create expectations for Finn being in this movie. And then if he's not, there's going to be a lot of people hurt and disappointed that that's, and that just wouldn't be fair to them to Boyega to the film or everything. If it's just, if it's just being cooked, let's, 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 let's think it cooked in the kitchen first uh, mm -hmm. a little bit more. But again, this is all being driven by excitement because there's so much excitement coming out of the announcement. I think the announcement of celebration was handled wonderfully. It was so fun and dramatic and exciting. So I think we want to experience that here. So anyways, it all comes from a good spot, but a lot of times it's not. So that's part of the, the pause. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, what, what, uh, what does the character of Finn mean to us? And this is our perspective. I mentioned mm -hmm. a, a little bit what he means, but, uh, there's a lot of different perspectives on Finn. Um, so it might be, what does he mean to us in our hearts, but also our minds, Joseph, uh, of, uh, this character all these years later. Yeah. I, we've, we've had an opportunity to, to talk about Finn on four center a lot and really dive into his arc and, the, you know, acknowledge Boyega's complaints. And I, I would even have some like, yeah, I, I would have liked this and, in last jedi or whatever mm -hmm. uh but i do feel like the arc is is clear mm -hmm. um and to me uh finn's got a couple of great things going i think in, in the sort of he's very grounded he's very real he's very relatable but in the archetype uh history of star wars he's the paladin he's the mm -hmm. he's the true knight not a jedi knight yet but he is the person who was made into a fighter made to be a soldier and we get to go on this journey where he decides who to fight for, what to fight for, how to fight for it. Hmm. But all along the way, it's the sort of he's going to fight. He tries to walk away from it and he, again and again, and he can't. He's, he wants to he wants to run away with Ray mm -hmm. in The Force Awakens, just run away from it all. And he can't run away from helping Ray. And then The Last Jedi, he's not he still just wants to go for Ray, but then he realizes he needs to fight the big fight. And then in The Rise of Skywalker, he's committed to the fight, but he needs to keep everybody together. And he's still making choices about when he can't turn away, when he must, you know, mm -hmm. face the mm -hmm. mythical dragon and say, you know, this far, no farther. I think it, it, that's one of the things that's so great about his arc from Maz claiming she sees the eyes of someone who wants to run away yeah. to him saying, I can't run away. I need to know that the First Order can never take another child. Mm -hmm. Um that that's the paladin that's the true, true knight and then uh, there's also this part of him that's so grounded and so real in i think is there throughout his story but gets crystallized in rise of skywalker that he's intuitive mm -hmm. that mm. his his gift is to uh be truly truly connected to his own instincts to how other people are feeling, to what other people need. We've talked a lot about all the literal f physical images in Rise of Skywalker where he's the one who's bringing people together. He's the one who's holding everybody 
uh, together. I mm-hmm. think it connects him to Leia in a great way with her force abilities being very intuitive. So I'd be fascinated to see where does that go? When, he's so skilled when there's just an inkling of the force. Mm-hmm. Where does that go? Where does that intuitive power, that desire to connect with others and to bring people together, where does that go when he's when he's fully trained? Mm-hmm. Uh, is, is a thing I'm really excited about. Final thing for me, I, I just I like that he's always throughout all the films been very emotive. When he's mm-hmm. joyful, he's joyful. Uh, when he's frustrated, he's really frustrated. He's a character who's just his emotions are on the surface. Yeah. So it's fun to imagine him as like a, a Jedi Master who, who is not like totally uh, you know po face, not Poe Dameron. Uh, <laughs> totally still faced and quiet and serene, but like a Jedi Master is like it's the Force, it's everywhere, it's loud, it's fun. Let's joke around, let's feel yeah. things. You know, I was gonna say like a particularly joyful Jedi. Not that we haven't had, yeah. you know, we've had Kit Fisto and his smile. We've had Quinlan Buck. This would be his own like kind that. of like, hey, this is great. Like, I'm serious. I got a serious mind. Don't you worry. But it's also, this is a great opportunity. Yeah. Um, wonderful stuff there. Uh, Jen, I'll ask you the same same question. I'll just throw in quickly for me. You know, this is a, a my perspective thing. I, I've, I've over the years connected with Finn's journey a little bit even more than it when it was unfolding of, of someone who's, kind of uh, isolated as a lot of it not his fault at all right <laughs> he was mm-hmm. trained up uh, and, and and brainwashed to a certain degree and and he emerges and takes his helmet off and he connects with one person and that's just kind of how life works you you start connecting to those around you but then maybe you feel that's enough that's okay i don't need to worry about the big pictures and then you start connecting into into the big picture and and i i've gone through a little bit of that growth in in, in my life so i see it in, in, in finn more and that's what i see <laughs> finn reflects um You know, a lot of people see themselves reflected in Finn for various reasons. That's mine. That's mine. And I've appreciated the Rise of Skywalker stuff even more. Uh, Joseph, you're the ones that really first uh, kind of pointed out to me. Like, he's he's often in the center of shots. He's an Mm -hmm. anchor. He's an anchor. And and I I love that about him because I see a little bit of myself in that. But to have it now just committed to the bigger picture. uh, and, and, And it's a natural, intuitive progression. And I've enjoyed that more and more and more. Plus, you know, I don't know. I think it's cool when he's on the back of an Orbach on a starting <laughs> right into battles. One of my favorite Star Wars moments with BB-8 and Jenna there with him. But uh, Jen, what does Finn re- represent for you or mean to you? And, and uh, what do it mean to have the character get a little more time in Star Wars? Uh, you know, what I, what I love about The Force Awakens is John Boyega brought humor. It, which is one of the key elements of Star Wars is, yeah. is the humor that's woven throughout. And he does it in a way, and it's you guys really freaking hard to, to <laughs> ma- you know, be, be in these moments that are serious or action oriented and throw in a line that's funny and not forced. And he does it effortlessly. And mm. I love that. I, and I thought that, he, you know, he and Ray had such fantastic chemistry every time they were on screen together, it was just riveting to watch. Um, that was, I felt like what was missing for me in the last Jedi that I mean, again, I love the last Jedi, but that was one thing that I, I loved their chemistries specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, John Boyega reminds me of Tom Cruise in that they're like a hundred percent committed in every scene that they do in whatever it is, whether it's emotional, whether it's action, whether it's lighthearted. And I just, I love that. And because mm-hmm. of that, I really, I do want him to take more center stage i think he could do it i think that he's i think that he's a fantastic actor and i want him to wield a lightsaber because (laughs) that was what i was thinking when i was watching the force awakens and that lightsaber went through the air i'm like it's gonna be it's gonna be fit oh Mm. yeah okay cool that's cool too right but um i do want him to wield a lightsaber i just I think that'd be so wonderful it, and what it would mean to so many fans and yeah. it makes sense for the character. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see where they take this character and I know that they're going to be intentional yeah. and it's, they're not going to put him in the movie unless they have something to tell, right? Mm, yeah. They're going to save him for when it's right. Yeah. And I think he would do the same. Uh, and one thing I'll get your more of your thoughts, just too, but uh, in looking ahead to the character, y- y- you both are touching on a, you know, the humor, the joy, uh, the intuitive nature. I would love him to be, um, there's a lot of things I would love him to be, but if, if Ray's built a new Jedi order and he's like the recruiter, he's mm. going to the mm. living room. Cause it'd be a different vibe than a lot of things we've seen before. 
If you still got to convince him to leave early to train, if unless that's that we'll see if how, how Ray has her thoughts on that. But if Finn's like, let me let me get you on the emotions. Let me get you on the that thing you're feeling. That feeling, I know it. I know it. Mm. It, it could be not that I, I I'm not just to say he's got to go be a college scout, but like there's so many <laughs> things you can do. But I want him to try to tell me the benefits of 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 taking this path and doing it in no way. I love uh, that. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I like the the picture of him landing in a village and just turning and sensing <laughs> yeah, where there's yeah. power and. He yeah. takes out his lightsaber, which I agree he should have. And yeah. say, this is what that means. This is what this means. Do you feel oh, I it? Love that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, uh, anyways, anyways, uh, more. I want a final question in the segment here, Joseph. But you, you had uh, some more thoughts. No, no, no. I think uh, I, I'm I'm excited to talk about your final question. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. I apologize. There. Yeah. My final question is: you, if, if what what if he's not in the movie? And, and that can go into a negative way. You know, what Stuff what I said earlier about there'd be disappointed people thinking, well, this was supposed to happen. Now he's cut from the film and maybe it was never supposed to happen. Or it's the positive us side of it too of, hey, uh, maybe he's not in this particular film, but maybe that film does well enough and the series can go on or there's more storytelling, which John Boyega, if he wants to, can come back to this role. Uh, it's kind of what we we're talking about earlier, but that's the question, Justin. What if he's not in the movie? Yeah, I think that we are leapfrogging our discussions a little bit, which, which, mm-hmm. uh, I, I mean, us is the entire Star Wars fan <laughs> uh, <laughs> community, the entire, you know, uh, pop culture community. It's mm-hmm. an obvious question for us to be talking about Finn because of the power of the character, because of John Boyega, because of the way he shared his journey, because of the, the way mm-hmm. the rise of Skywalker set him up to mm-hmm. take that next step. And now we're hungry for that next step. But I also feel like, you know, on this very podcast, we're going to talk more about the movie in the second half. And that continues to be, I, I think we're kind of leapfrogging past some questions of what is this movie? Mm-hmm. Does Finn make sense in it? So mm. that's why my answer continues to be huge. Yes, I want to see Finn back. Huge. Yes, I want to see John Boyega back. I don't want him to be in this movie unless it's a triumphant return and makes mm-hmm. sense for the movie and doesn't leave us with the same Finn feelings of yeah. <laughs> ah, we, we didn't, we, we only got this little slice of him and we want this full explosion. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, I say all that to caveat, I would be okay if he's not in the movie because I think again, it opens up this possibility of other Finn stories. I, mm-hmm. I, there's so, and for me, I think there's also that like, well, Ray is building a new Jedi order Finn Mm -hmm. is force sensitive. Even the Lego stories that are non-canon have been. Well, of course, the first thing that happens after Rise of Skywalker is they start training together. So Mm -hmm. why wouldn't Finn be there? Mm -hmm. I think that's a really logical train of thought that uh, that perhaps many of us are on of why wouldn't Finn be there? Finn should be there. Mm -hmm. And that's where my mind goes is I think there are a lot of interesting storytelling reasons for him to not be there 15 years later. Mm-hmm. It, it, it could be that he and Ray trained together for years, but now he's off on his own journey. Uh, I love your suggestion that he he's a scout. He's out in, in the unknown, unknown, unknown regions, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. finding people. Um, yeah. Or because his gifts are very similar to Leia. Is he likely at Leia? Does he have the gifts of a Jedi? But he's also pulled by other callings. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he, he might want to find out where he is from. Maybe he's at this point a Jedi and he's the leader of his actual home planet. Um, Mm -hmm. Could all the stormtroopers who have been kidnapped uh, form their own new nation? Mm -hmm. And he's the leader with that. Is he focused on, there are still forced order remnants and that's, that's my calling to make sure that never happens again. There's all sorts of interesting story threads to be pulled with Finn instead is as well as it's an interesting story for him to be side by side with Ray. Mm -hmm. But I also think there's lots of, truly interesting reasons for him to be on his own path on his own journey 15 years later and i am just kind of longing for a disney plus show or uh and then i and then i will stop talking the um a huge thing that we kind of haven't had time to talk about on force center is it's great that lucasfilm announced three movies in three eras but there's still that question of how does that work in modern hollywood we don't announce trilogies anymore because yeah. everything moves too fast and you, you can't be tied to two trilogies if a movie stumbles mm-hmm. 
But that also leaves room to me of like, if this is the movie that's coming out in 2025 and it's being structured to be, it can be standalone or it can be another movie. Mm-hmm. Could it be that this new Jedi Order movie is gangbusters and the next one's all about Finn yeah. in this new Jedi Order series? So mm-hmm. Disney Plus, his own movie, his own stories. I'm open to all those things. No, I, I am indeed. And, you know, you know the, 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 that old question that, that, that was emerging before well, Disney Plus was the you know, could there be two Star Wars films a year? And 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 I've I've, I've flip flop on that over the years. But now you now you're in an era where I don't want three a year. But like, if they're in different, decidedly different eras, I think I think the mindset would be a little bit more open to you know December we get uh, Ray, now we get Finn, and then in, in May we get the Dawn of the Jedi. You know that kind of vibe yeah. could work and could be different. Uh, all all wonderful stuff there. Yeah, this idea him getting into politics of any kind is fascinating for a character that uh, at one point was not involved again some of it not his a lot of it not his fault but then later on you know that struggle but then to have him completely involved and now a leader in that regard would be interesting uh the idea of you talking about the stormtroopers uh and instead of trying to you, you definitely would maybe have wipe out the, the the remnants type of vibe but also what if it's the other way and it's a it's a healing exactly what mm-hmm. you're talking about but those who were affected, those who were taken from their families, taken from their identities, their origins, uh, the the Lando and Jana of it all. And there's another character that could be right by his side while this is going on. Uh, him going around the galaxy healing is is a pretty interesting thing. And and uh, we'll talk exactly uh, like you said, Justin, we'll talk about the, what the movie could be here in a bit. But just in terms of Finn's storytelling, there's a lot of potential, Jan, even if he's not in the movie. Even if he's not in the movie. And, you know, it just, it's hard because I feel like I have this kid-like, you know, impatience. I want it, I want it now. I want this. <laughs> and Lucas films like my parent. And it's like, don't worry. It's coming. <laughs> right? Like for years, we're like, we want a live action Ahsoka. Guess what? Now we're getting mm-hmm. it. Like mm-hmm. they, they're, they are fans as well. They are storytellers and they have all these things in the works behind the scenes and it's kind of like a big puzzle at this point and so it's like well, where does this all fit we know we want to bring finn back how can we f- make it work mm-hmm. when the timing is right when the story is right so i'm trusting that we will see the character again just <laughs> look at you and mcgregor right mm-hmm. <laughs> it took some time but we got him back and so you know we'll we'll get finn we'll get finn back uh back wielding the lightsaber there you go. You heard it. Rumors here. Four set of rumors. <laughs> we'll get them back. But hey, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think Daisy was a, a, a big key piece to the puzzle. There's a lot of key pieces to the puzzle, but I think uh, I think that was an important one. But I do agree with Joseph. That doesn't necessarily mean we want Finn to stand in the shadows. We want Mm-mm. the spotlight on this character. So we'll see. But that begs the question of what is this next movie going to be about? And we're going to dive into that. We're going to take a quick break. But before we do, we are going to have a Force Center Recommends, an audio book that we think you should try, try out, but a hard copy, hard cover book I've started reading. Joseph, what do we got? We have Battle Scars by Sam Meggs. Uh, the it is the uh, the in between story of two video games. People love it. We uh, Ken has started reading it. I'm going to start reading it soon. We are going to cover it, so that's coming up soon. Coming up soon. Download your free audiobook today by going to audibletrial.com slash force center. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash force center for your free audio book. All right, quick break. On the other side, more thoughts on this new Jedi Order film. When's it going to come? What's it going to be about? Let's dive into some thoughts here on Force Center. Stick around. Welcome back to Force Center, the big show, the main show, the superstar story of our fleet is what we used to say about it, but this is just our new show there. Uh, but everyone's <laughs> welcome. Words are in my mind. All right, we're going to have more thoughts on the new Jedi Order film. Like I said, not go, really going off specific news here, but this was shared in our very own Discord. I think it was our buddy, Mark Canope, maybe it was someone else. I don't know. I apologize. But a, a Twitter, uh, this uh, Joseph and I, uh, we both kind of looked for the source, the actual full interview. It cuts off about a minute. Uh, someone under the username scavenger underscore Jakku, uh, tweeted uh, out this clip. It's kind of this random clip of Charmaine Obey Chinoy 
uh, talking and uh, she says uh, she is directing the quote next Star Wars film. So I want to start right there. We're going to dive into what this could be. But Joseph, you have some other information to back this up as well. If we take that on face value and this is a 2025 film, are, are we happy with that? I mean, yes, we're happy about a new movie, but is that what we want? Does it make sense? Or should the new Jedi Order come later? And again, should we, Joseph, take this on face value? Uh, I, I think that this is, uh, seems like, the, like, like the weather reports, this is true now. Yes. Um, <laughs> if this is the uh, the script that uh, Stephen Knight is working on, Kathleen Kennedy gave some quotes about he's working on it, should be done around end of May. Mm -hmm. It's the next step uh, in this. We've been working on it for a long time. But uh, I understand why people are reacting to this. There's such a flood of news during Star Wars Celebration. It's hard to track everything, but... I was really looking for Charmaine obed uh quotes uh, that she actually said mm -hmm. on stage about what the movie was. Uh, turns out on Instagram, on April 7th, uh, she put out uh, an Instagram post about her experience. Uh, she talked a little bit about, uh, she kind of wrote down some of the things that she mm -hmm. actually said during the panel. So that was great. Mm -hmm. But uh, her Instagram post from April 7th begins... It has been quite a day in London. The news is out. I am so very excited to be directing the next Star Wars movie and bringing Daisy Ridley back to the galaxy. So uh, mm -hmm. she said this on April 7th, I believe, was the day of the day, huh. <laughs> the, day of the panel or maybe the day after. Time, mm. time moved weird. Uh, no, it is the day of the panel. So uh, that, that, there it is. Mm. Uh, the director has said twice that it's the next film. Yeah. So I believe right now, yep, it's the next film. Yeah, no, I think... Uh, I think you're right about the weather report things, uh, but it also kind of makes makes sense that this would be the next one. Um, but Jen, your thoughts on that? Do you, do you do you take it at face face value? Do you want to take it at face value? Is you, are you ready for 2025? This being it? Oh my gosh, it's hard to imagine. But yeah, I mean, she she doesn't have to say the next. She can say I'm directing a Star Wars movie. <laughs> the fact that she says the next, very very specific, is probably what they've been talking about behind the scenes. The next Star Wars movie starring or we'll talk about that daisy ridley um yeah i'm ex i'm excited I i'm i'm excited <laughs> and, um, I'm, I'm you know it's gonna be sunny for now it could get cloudy it could start raining you know it's, <laughs> disney has a lot uh, on their on their plate in terms of movies and things like that so things sometimes will get shuffled around so it may be done the film may be wrapped whatever uh and then they may say you know what let's actually push it a few more months. So mm. 2025 is kind of what I'm expecting. But yeah. Changed. Yeah. And it, it, it'd it be a tight production scheduled, you know, you, you said that quote about the, the script, uh, Joseph being finished in May and, and, you know, but it's, if you, it could happen, it could, it, it, it could, you know, this isn't the, the old days and by old days, I mean, probably just 10 years ago <laughs> where you needed sometimes three full years or something like that. And I mean, mm -hmm. you, you could get this done and, and finalize this thing in the summer of 2025 to get it in theaters in December 2025. So it's still in a wheelhouse where it makes a lot of sense, I guess, is the first starting point there. Yeah, I, th I think time wise, it, it works just fine for for yeah. modern production speed. Yeah. Um, and, and it sounds like the idea has been gestating for a long time. So I think there are probably even elements of pre-production yeah. uh, that uh, I look forward to the art of book in 2026, where we get to see the drawings <laughs> that were actually made in 2022 for this. You know? uh, I love that. You're so right. It's like, oh, we were wondering and they 2020, they had the first concept art or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. And Ken, to your question about like how we actually feel about it being the next one, right? Yeah. Because we had the the announcement of those three movies. Uh, Filoni's definitely seems a, a little way off because the the Mandoverse is still building to the mm -hmm. point of that mm -hmm. movie. Yeah. Uh, cool. uh, just in terms of Hollywood stuff, Mangold's a little busy right now, little uh, so I don't think that's his next project. Uh, but I, I'm. I'm happy with this. I'm very excited for Ray. I'm very excited for the the new Jedi Order, a Jedi Academy story. We'll we'll talk more about what the story is about, but uh, I know that there are people who just legitimately don't enjoy the the sequel trilogy. Uh, full uh, full respect if you're you just like I I tried. I, I get it. I don't enjoy them. I know there are people out there who don't enjoy them. I know there are also people out there who it isn't a a pure just taste thing as an audience it's a um there there are uh nasty elements of sexism racism again i i started with <laughs> mm -hmm. i know there are plenty of people who just don't like them so i'm not saying everybody who dislikes them has that but mm. obviously 
just from social media, there are people who are going to make bad faith arguments against Ray, against this director, um, against this era, uh, coming not from a place of just personal taste as an audience, but from uh, an agenda. Um, so I understand that people look at some of the the noise about the sequel trilogy mm -hmm. and go, well, is this the best follow up? But that that first film came out in 2015 and there people who grew the sequel trilogy kids are going to be coming of age. We're like, yeah, great. Yeah, we, we heard you, grandma and grandpa. Yeah, <laughs> we heard your mom and dad that they're, it's not your Star Wars. It's our Star Wars. She's our Jedi master. She has been for 10 years. We're good to go. So I think I think there's that factor to it. I also think there's a, there's a real clarity to it of this is continuing the most recent big screen Star Wars st story. Audiences know who Ray is. Mm -hmm. uh, audiences, I think, uh, the concept of hey, Ray, the star of those last three movies, it's about fifteen years later, and she's training some of them new Jedi. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. like uh, neither of my grandmas are alive, but if they were, even they could understand. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, oh, that that Jedi lady from the last ones. She's training some kids. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's very clear. It's very marketable. Um, obviously, they they can and will communicate the other movies. But jumping back to the Dawn of the Jedi, or I think the challenge of Filoni's movie for the general public is going to be: How many TV shows do I need to watch this one? How many cartoons right. do I need to get this one? There's right. a there's a, a linear clarity. I always, can I always remember your story of of running into people who thought Jin was Ray. Cause like, mm. I don't know, this is some brown haired girl. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know which is which this really gets beyond that. It's just the story continues. Yeah, no, I, yeah, it all makes sense. And and you're right about the, the Filoni film is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, and, and, and that's a good thing. I think Mangle being busy, is, is a big factor. Uh, by the way, the ongoing side note, the ongoing journey of a lot of folks, including you, Jen, reminded me that not only I, I know Mangold's work, I actually love his work. I just never associated his <laughs> name with it. Uh, our, our friend uh, in, in our face uh, four center uh, discord, Bilbo uh, Baggins is Bilbro Baggins is, uh, reminded me he was, he did three ten to Yuma, which is one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I worked in movie news. This is why it wasn't a good fit for movie news. I don't, I don't follow a lot of the names. I look at the back of baseball cards. They don't look at a lot of the, 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 the movies. So anyway, he was, uh, he was actually at your birthday gathering. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you <laughs> noticed that you missed yeah. Mangold, yeah. Uh, your own party. Someone said there's this uh, kind of uh, confident <laughs> loud guy named Jim in the corner. I thought, Oh, okay. Um, anyways, uh, it just doesn't make sense for that to come yet. So it does all of this make sense. And for me to obey Chinois comments makes sense. I think I put in a little bit of this doubt of like, does, does, does it make sense for being the next one? Not because of um, any of the negative attachment, though that's going to be there, but I think that's going to be there no matter when it comes out, which is like, I don't know. Do we want a couple more years for the, the you know, the actors to age up a bit or, you know, again, I know you can de-age, you can up age. Okay. You can do whatever you need in the makeup chair, but, uh, not that Ray's going to have, you know, gray hair and a cane, but you know what I mean? Like, I was like, maybe just a little <laughs> bit, a little bit of time is what I was feeling. But then I kind of, I don't know. I've just been getting excited to like, nah, let's just do this. Let's just mm -hmm. get back into this. And you're right, Joseph. Force Awakens is come By the time this one releases, it, Force Awakens will be 10 years in the rearview mirror. Revenge of the Sith was only 10 years before the Force Awakens. Mm. Wow. And that's a weird time. What? Yeah. You're right? Yeah. It's oh, a no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. That's so weird. <laughs> oh, time. Uh, time. She keeps on moving. So I do think I think uh, I think when I was even putting these questions together, I wasn't sure about it. But now I'm just kind of excited about this possibility. Um, but I do want to talk about what the movie might be, my, what it might have started off as. And again, that's that's just rumors and thoughts versus anything that's a fact we'll see when that book comes out uh in 2026 mm -hmm. but we got the rumors of big coming back we just talked about uh you you said joseph a rumored lead attached to the lindelof script now rumored to be off the project and the excitement for ray being centered in this movie it's at a fever pitch daisy coming out that power red dress coming out to to, to thunderous applause and everyone's <laughs> excited and, and I've seen this a little bit uh, on social media and just in discussions, and I get where it comes from, but I want to discuss this idea. Do we feel this film will be a de facto episode 10? Are we okay with that? Do we prefer that? Or do we want it to have a stronger identity as its own 
film. And Joseph, you've got some thoughts to lead us on. <laughs> I do. I think uh, absolutely it could become anything. Maybe it does become a de facto episode 10. I think that right now what's being said about it makes me feel like it is uh, more focused. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there is some amount of discussion, like I said, that's kind of leapfrogging over what we do know about this film. Uh, mm -hmm. And I want to take just a moment to read the rest of, of the director's uh, Instagram post, which I think is, to my memory, is very clear to what she actually said on stage. Mm -hmm. She said, I have always been attracted to the hero's journey in the world definitely needs more heroes. The blueprints of the heroes we see on screen are rooted in reality. I've spent my life meeting real life heroes who have overcome the most oppressive empires and battled impossible odds. And that to me is the heart of Star Wars which is why I was attracted to the promise of a new Jedi Order and why I'm particularly excited about being in, immersed inside a Jedi Academy with a powerful Jedi Master. Mm -hmm. That from the director right now is what we know about the film. And I so understand getting excited about the rumor of Finn. I so understand having the discussion that, that we're having now of, well, if Finn is in it, then why not Poe too? Why, mm -hmm. How is this not just episode 10 if there's something, a galactic threat against the Jedi? I get all that, but I just really want to boil it back down to what the director said. Mm -hmm. And what she is saying to me is, this is a perspective where the Jedi are the heroes. We might question them, they might struggle, but this is about the Jedi as the um, the way that we were introduced to them by Obi-Wan Kenobi, the guardians of peace and justice. And there's an oppressive force that doesn't want guardians of peace and justice to mm -hmm. exist and succeed. And to me, that makes it different than the Skywalker saga because it's laser focused on the Jedi Academy, the mm -hmm. Jedi Order. And arguably the Skywalker saga has the Jedi Sith battle as its main spine, mm. but it's not the only focus. You, you have the, the politics of Leia, you have the scoundrel side of Han, you, you have the sort of military side and the, the fighter pilot side of, uh, of a Poe, uh, all, all these different facets. I think that this film could be laser focused on the Academy. And maybe this isn't a threat to the entire galaxy. Maybe it's just a threat to the Academy. And we've gotten lots of stories about the philosophy of the Jedi, but they've been they've been balanced with all the other ingredients of a Skywalker saga film. So if this is really laser focused on a question of who are these new Jedi? What do they believe? How is it different? Who wants them gone and why? How do they persevere? How does that affect the rest of the galaxy? If it's entirely about the Jedi, that to me is different than episode 10. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the building of heroes and the threats of those heroes, yeah, that definitely has some implications and ramifications for the galaxy. But I agree with you there. That's part of what I also want to talk about, too, uh, Jen, is that while Ray will be at the center, she's a Jedi Master rebuilding all the order. It hasn't said that she's necessarily the lead. It definitely has that energy right now. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that's part of what we too want to ask as well is how do we currently see Ray's involvement in this movie? Uh, and a balance of the old and new. I think, Joseph, what you're saying is we, we got a long list of new heroes we're going to meet and Ray's kind of there with them. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, and it's easy to, the excitement for these characters that uh, an entire generation of Star Wars fans love and uh, other generations like us too. Some of them, we love them too. I want more Poe. I want more Lomer Daisy. I want more after Akbar. <laughs> Rose. Uh, yeah. Rose. Rose Tico is a great example. There's a character you come back. Yeah, it, it, get the get the band all back together. But uh, I just don't I, right now. Don't know if that's the direction they're going, Jen. No, you know, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be an episode ten. Be, just based on her on her Instagram caption, mm -hmm. being immersed inside a Jedi Academy. Well, that just means that it is, it is this own little world that's happening within the Academy. Uh, you know, amongst amongst these this crew, and the way that I'm seeing it is that Ray will definitely be one of the leads, but perhaps it could be more like Andor, in that it's a it's an ensemble, mm -hmm. and so yes, Andor was the lead, but we really did learn so much more about these other characters and their relationships with Andor, and so I think maybe we could see something similar to that in this film, and I also would like for it to have its own identity because I love the sequel trilogy, 
but I know that it, it has been picked apart and there's a lot, it's kind of caused a d- divisiveness, right? Oh, so I want this film, this new film to kind of redeem the risks and the choices that JJ mm. Abrams and Ryan Johnson made. Not that they have to, because we we love those films, but just like it's like just proving like the the, the mm-hmm. seeds that they planted, they were they did good, <laughs> they yeah, did yeah. right by these characters. And Ray is not a Mary Sue, and we're gonna see how a badass she is as a <laughs> Jedi Master, right? And so I I'm excited, and I think that it could be something totally fresh, a fresh new world that still is consistent with the old world that they built. Yeah, you're you're getting me so excited for this these ideas, Jennifer. I, I really think it, it's powerful and exciting to me that Sharmino Bed Chinoy is really talking about the Jedi as heroes. Mm-hmm. And I, I saw a a fresh YouTube video today about wasn't the whole point of the sequel trilogy that the Jedi should end? So why are they doing a new movie with the Jedi? Mm. Um, that perspective persists. We've talked about it a lot, and I don't want to be snarky, but but as we've we've said, that that's what the bad guy says in the middle of the second film. That's what Luke <laughs> says before he gets brought back to hope. And Jedi Master Luke Skywalker, arguably one of the main characters of the entire saga of yeah. Star Wars, says the lesson and the lesson is also the title of the film <laughs> that I will not be the last Jedi. Oh, I failed in not being snarky. I, <laughs> I, I feel strongly about this. Uh, I understand the, the, the sequel trilogy questions the Jedi, the, the prequel era questions the Jedi, even the high Republic is showing us some, some ways that they faltered. I think that we should question our heroes, but everything that Shermino Bed Shinoi is saying is about, yeah, let's let's pull back. Ray went through a journey, and Ray is somebody who really understands why you need the light side to push back on oppression and darkness. A director who has real life experiences and has made documentaries about real life experiences, like we need heroes. Of course, we should question them. Of course, there are gray areas. But let's not just fall into that rabbit hole of like, yeah, but what's bad about them? Are they hypocrites sometimes? <laughs> Great questions. We've we've spent a lot of time on that in Star Wars. And this feels to me like, yeah, but pull back at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. They are defenders of peace and justice mm-hmm. when when people are being victimized mm-hmm. and oppressed. They're the ones who come in and make a difference in it. If this film is being made from that perspective with the Jedi as heroes mm-hmm. and Ray is a hero, it, it really does uh, uh, tie very well to what I think is actually being said in the sequel trilogy of, yep. yep, it's really hard. There are missteps, but the Jedi are needed and should continue. Mm. I mean, what wasn't one of the first lines uh, without the Jedi, there can be no balance. Wasn't there some need for Jedi? <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I think you're both right. And it get, gets me excited of this idea of like, it's building on what was there. Uh, we, we have this great return. We have this rise of, of Skywalker. We have the last Jedi uh, that that title moves from one to another person. And the other person gets a chance to build uh, an order again, or maybe has built some semblance of it in 15 years. And I think this is a film that would question uh, the Jedi and have characters question, whoa, 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 why do we want these wizards back? Uh, But I got to imagine it's going to almost be a a justice for Jedi film. (laughs) That that to me is what I hear and what the director is currently saying. Maybe it will change. Yeah. But that's I'm excited to talk about Finn. I'm excited to talk about episode 10, uh, all those things. But I think sometimes we lose track of what do we actually for sure know? And right now what we actually for sure know is the words of the director. And mm-hmm. those words are mm-hmm. justice for the Jedi. <laughs> uh, o- oppression is real and you need people to stand up against it. And that's what this film is about. Yeah. 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 Look, and, and, and I think we definitely want to try to avoid being too, too snarky, but it's part of my frustration a lot of times with I'm all here to support uh, everyone's right to their opinion about some films. But when, that is something that's put out there in social media. But I thought these films said the Jedi should end. And it's like that, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> it's, that's no longer an opinion. You're stating something that was, that's against what the movie was, was, was stating. Watch all of it. It's, it's hard not to be just quite frankly an a-hole about it. And I'm trying to be better 
I'll, I'll, I'll get better with it. Um, I, I feel it's part of my frustration that that maybe seeps through even on some four center in the last six months where I'm just like rubbing, I'm constantly rubbing my furrowed brow of that's not what it said. But um, this can be a movie that can uh, maybe drive that point home. Hopefully, maybe mm-hmm. we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got some distance to it. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but news will start emerging. And, and, and as far as the rumors and everything like that, it, it can be fun. It can be exciting. We're going to start getting more and more casting things. And some of it might be official. We'll hold on to uh, the, the official news as long as we can. Um, but uh, sometimes like this week, it's, it's just the rumors swirling there. Any final thoughts here? We got a lot going on. I want I do want to, you know, we talked a lot about um, Ray's involvement with this movie and, and, and uh, to the level the character will be featured. Was she a lead? And how do you want to find the balance? Uh, I think we've answered some of that already, but Jen, final thoughts on all that before we uh, move on. I just think it's really, it's really smart. I think it's uh, from a business standpoint, right? Because they got to get people to the movie theaters, which that's why they do all those sequels and reboots and remakes. Right. But here they're taking a character that is beloved and they're going to create a new story around her. It's a win-win for fans and non-fans alike. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I do think right now for me, even even above the, the Finn question, the biggest question of the film is what is Ray's role? Yeah. Obviously, the, the way, again, that the director introduced the film is saying it's about this Jedi Academy and there's a there's a Jedi Master. Do you want to meet the Jedi Master? And yeah, th- there isn't anything it's saying. And the main character and the person who goes on a journey and changes is yeah. Ray. So right. the biggest question for me is how much is Ray the focus versus the new students? Or is Jennifer so wisely said comparing it to like Andor? Is it an mm-hmm. o- ensemble piece where they're equally the main characters where Ray and, and some, uh, some of the younger Jedi are equally main characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really interested in that. I really think since they, they put Ray uh, across in such a big way at the mm-hmm. panel that I want her to be a, a heavy focus yeah. of the film. But uh, quickly, to me, there are like there are two ways to look at that in terms of is Ray the main character? Are we talking screen time, mm-hmm. or are we talking Ray is the character who goes on a journey, mm-hmm. or is she steadfast and it's the younger Jedi who who go on the journey? Historically, looking at Star Wars, you can look at the prequels and say is Obi Wan one of the main characters? Like. Absolutely, Obi Wan is one of the main characters in terms of screen time. We spend a lot of time with him. He goes on a little bit of a journey in that he's young and brash in uh, in the Phantom Menace, and he learns a little bit and becomes solid. But then he's he's solid in Revenge of the Sith, and he has to make a hard choice. So he goes through a lot, mm-hmm. but he's not the focus. Anakin changing is the focus, yeah. but he's on screen a lot. So is Ray in a little bit of an Obi Wan in the prequels role, where like she's all over the screen, but she's she's not the one going through something. She's in a mentor role, the way Obi Wan is in uh, the the prequels. Or is it a little bit more of Luke in the Last Jedi, where Ray is also going on a journey? She is fully formed as a Jedi, mm. but does she have to go through conflict and crisis and and emerge changed to become a teacher? Mm-hmm. And there are the two different paths where Ray is in the film a ton, but it's about screen time and about being a steadfast mentor, or it's about her journey to become the teacher she needs to be. Mm. Mm. And I don't know which one I want right now, which is a class. Or any versions. Uh, yeah, no love that there. And look, there's something to be said, Jen, about Star Wars star power, and Daisy Ridley's got it. And that's why the announcement was so just uh, warm and, and, and uh, received well by those in attendance and those around the world. Um it makes a lot of sense, but I, I like Joseph's points there. Uh, it could be, she could be the lead in many different ways. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. All right. All right. There we go. We'll find out soon enough. I think things will start emerging at a, at a, at a quicker pace. Here's <laughs> <Soon enough, laughs> the production schedule that we're uh, quite frankly imagining. We don't know the production schedule, but uh, <laughs> it could be, it could be there. All right. That's a look at star Wars news. Uh, our discussions around things based in the news headlines there. Uh, before we get out of here, we got uh, uh, this week in Star Wars history, looking ahead to Star Wars past. And there's a good chance we talked about this one before. I was trying to remember. We're in that cycle of <laughs> sometimes things pop up again on the old Star Wars, this day in Star Wars history. And I go, ooh, and I go, oh, wait, maybe we did talk about that. But I think it's a 
good week to talk about this again. On April 29th, 2014, the first ever official photo, the Episode 7 cast was released on StarWars.com. Of course, this was the famous black and white photo following a script read with uh, the, all of the cast in a large circle, including R2-D2 in a box just over the shoulder of J.J. Abrams. Uh, the cast members, uh, the photo created quite a stir, I should say. Um, the mixture of excitement and a little bit of controversy. The lack of female cast members as compared to the males in the cast stood out and was, for me, I, I'm saying, um, from my perspective, the first time in the Disney era that Star Wars had to answer some important questions from the fandom at large. Uh, prior to this, the announcement in 2012, there's, you know, to this, this was the first of like, hey, the world's changing. Uh, our, our, the fandom's kind of expectations are changing for the better. And, and you got to, you, Star Wars, have to kind of be aware of that. So uh, those important issues aside, and you can definitely bring them up. The photo also contained a world of possibilities and all oh, the speculations came pouring out of it. Star Wars is back and we now have the photo to match the hype. So what were our thoughts then? And, and what does it do to our minds now, all these years later, Jen? And I do mean all these years later. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's hard to, it's hard to believe. But I was excited back then and I thought it was thrilling to see the old cast with the new cast, Daisy and Carrie chatting adam driver looks you know for a fresh face he's smiling um mark hamill anthony daniels and i and then i started noticing the lack of women uh but you know i was really focused actually more on on celebrating that there was a young black actor and a latino actor that were in the main cast of star wars that was a huge huge win mm. And then I remember shortly after they announced that Lupita Nyong'o and Gwendolyn Christie were going to be joining. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, their faces ended up being covered, but you guys know how I feel about <laughs> faces being covered in Star Wars. Um, <laughs> but that was a beginning where I was starting to look at things from a, from a different perspective. And I remember saying to my husband, I was like, well, this is kind of a bummer. Yes, this is wonderful on the one hand to have some diversity, but at the same time, there's not enough women. And my husband who disclaimer, he, he is a white man. And he was like, <laughs> look, and he, he actually is a community organizer and he deals with a lot of social justice issues. And he's like, look, this is huge that they, this is big deal to have, you know, uh, John Boyega in the main cast, Oscar Isaac. He's like, you have to think of it like a giant ship and the ship is trying to steer an, another direction. It's going to be slow you have to celebrate these wins and yes, you can still want more and push for more, but we have to also like celebrate a victory like this. And, and look at us now, mm -hmm. the diversity on screen and behind the, the camera is it's incredible. And it's like, okay, this going back to that theme of patience. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I do also think that the outcry from fans also maybe pushed them, steered them a little bit faster mm -hmm. in that direction. I'd like to think so. No, wonderful thoughts. Uh, absolutely wonderful thoughts. And and this is why I, this photo does beg continued conversation over the years. Uh, mm. You know, you, there's a lot of truth, I think, in what you're saying uh, all the way through. But even what your husband's saying is, I think I had a little bit more of that perspective. But it wasn't, uh, it was just kind of like, hey, everyone, you, you calm down. We're not done with the cast and everything. But that's not necessarily the right approach when people want, needed uh, to point something out that they were seeing. And I do think it spurned change. I do think it spurned uh, change in JJ uh, a little bit, mm -hmm. or at least to... Uh, to uh, uh, go, oh, oh, crap, uh, uh, you're, you're right. Um, but also, you know, small changes still change, and I wish everything changed fast. That's just not the way of it, not the way in our own lives, not the way in society, unfortunately. So I think the, there is um, a lot of way, different ways to look at it there. And for me, again, it was the first time um, – it was the first time for me uh, – uh, I was working in the space, doing podcasts, covering news – and the first time I kind of felt this like, oh, I ain't the only one at this party. And <laughs> that was important for me to pick up on. Um, and uh, I, I have nothing to looking back and trying to remember all the things I said. I remember, do remember talking about this on one particular podcast. Like, I don't know. I probably didn't answer it the best way. I probably would answer it in a different way. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the lesson of this photo for me, too, just on the issues of it there. And the excitement uh, that emerged was downright fun, Joseph. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think it was a, it was a great, amazing moment for uh, Star Wars fandom. I think uh, definitely from my perspective as somebody who grew up with the original trilogy to to see them back and to see them them all in a room together. And I remember studying like 
who's sitting next to who, who, who mm-hmm. appears to be mm-hmm. laughing, who, what are they, ta- are they talking about the quality of the coffee? Are they talking about the forest? <laughs> who knows? It was, it was so thrilling. And I know I've said this before, but for all the ills of social media, even as I think some, some parts of social media become even, even more challenging. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am always grateful for it because it, it, it exposed me to so many voices where I could hear people's story and it wasn't theoretical. It was, this is a living human who is experiencing this. Mm-hmm. And I was lucky to have some of that growing up, um, but not I- as much as I wanted. And and to be able to see people just go, this is absolutely thrilling. I love Star Wars. I've always loved Star Wars, but I've always, but I've been a woman <laughs> and I've also always felt a little like, take Leia and be happy about it. Take bad man, be happy about it. Yeah. Uh, and to, to hear that experience on social media was really powerful. I've had many, uh, experiences like that, many moments like that, but this was a, this was a powerful one to go, right. I can be excited about this, but I can also respect the voices who are pushing for, Mm -hmm. we need, we, we, we need to know that this ship is turning. (laughs) Right. And on this particular issue, uh, we, we need you to to hoist the sails <laughs> and, <laughs> and turn a little faster on this one. Exactly. And they did on this particular issue uh, with uh, future future casting. Which So o- overall, all in all, a, a good personal experience for me. And I think definitely a, a good experience for for the ship. Um, yeah. And now now when I look at it, you know, there's all those memories. But now I just I just love the fact that we now know. That Mark Hamill was just reading stage directions, did not have a line of dialogue. <laughs> oh Luke's, my God. It's Luke Skywalker. And I'm watching, you know, I was so obsessed with Luke. I'm looking at that photo and like, what all does he say? What all does he feel? Like nothing. Yeah. 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 And, and in a weird way, it's, uh, is some people would be really upset with this, but it's, it's one of our only shots of the big three together, this amount of error, right? <laughs> Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. No. I. I, And I. I sometimes uh, laugh. I. I will always say I. I thought it was a a brave and bold choice to do what they did with Luke in this particular film, and I. I I always love it, even though I I do have some, some pangs in my heart over over not seeing the big three on screen together again. I. I totally get that. But yeah, this this picture just I kind of laugh at it in a way of just like, oh, we had no idea. We had no (laughs) idea. Which is why all the rumors and speculations and are just. Folly and fun, uh, fun folly. So wait till the film comes out. But anyways, great time, great memories. I still laugh and get a big smile on my face when I see this photo. Mm-hmm. There we go. Agreed. Yes. All the way back in 2014. All right, that is it for this week. We're done. We've wrapped this up. Uh, we've looked at the news. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Force Center Pod. We're on Instagram and YouTube as well. As we said up top, Facebook page is Force Center Podcast. You can get us on Acast, iHeartRadio, Apple podcast and more merch available at tpublic.com slash user slash force center and you can support us directly at patreon.com slash force center where we're hitting goals and have special episodes up and special thanks to all those who hung out with our live star wars ranked episode tape for the patrons uh will release to the public shortly at the end of this week so uh, that was made possible because of all you you can follow me uh, at catnapstock across all social media platforms including for what it's worth spoutable i just yeah I'm going to follow you. I need to squat on my, uh, my, my, my name. <laughs> just make sure I can keep, you know, my, I'm sure there's people just chomping at the bit to get my name. No, uh, I'm over there in spoutable. So watch me spout. Uh, if you want to, uh, want to over there, I'll go to my website, kenapsack.com for more. Uh, Joseph, where can they follow you? Uh, you can uh, follow me on some social media. I used to say all the social media, yeah. but it's just not true. It's just not true. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Joseph Scrimshaw. I, I will join Spoutable, but first I'm going to challenge myself to post again on Mastodon and Hive mm. <laughs> oh. before I join Spoutable. It's the sort of eating your vegetables version of social media use. Yeah. Uh, you can also check out my YouTube page. Just search for Joseph Scrimshaw on YouTube. There you go. Jen, you're on Spoutable, apparently. Where else can they find you? Yes, you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and now Spoutable at Jennifer Landa. Uh, <laughs> and TikTok, for now, as long as the app is available, at Jennifer Landa 1138. <laughs> so, what a wonderful landscape. Just let's all go back to Friendster and make it simple there. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. That is it for this week. We'll see you next time here on Force Center. Force Center.